My ex, Harold, and I were together for about five years. We got together at the age of 17 and broke up around 22. It was not a great breakup. He cheated on me for years and got incredibly toxic and cruel towards the end. I have not talked to him even once since we separated and have no idea what he is doing with his life. My current boyfriend, Johnny, and I have been together for eight months, but we were friends in middle school. We saw each other at a restaurant and barely remembered each other and have been together since. Look, I have gone through so many email accounts in my life. Right now, I have three email accounts that are in frequent use. I can't imagine the amount of email accounts I have made that are still active, but no longer in use. I needed to get into a very old email account made in 2011 that I retired about three years ago for a specific document in the Google Drive. I have a Pixel phone. So when I add a Gmail account to my phone, it adds everything. Contacts, photos, calendar items, etc. I found out about this because there was suddenly a calendar item that 16-year-old me made. It was be married, basically. I missed my own wedding, lol. So Johnny and I thought it would be funny to look through the old email to find random things I left in there. We found some really cute pictures of us as kids that I thought were lost and some other cute things. But while looking at the photos, an old explicit image of Harold from when we were together was there. If I had known this would be there, I would have never shown Johnny until all the stuff was deleted. Not only because nobody wants to see that stuff, but also for Harold's privacy. It was a low effort explicit image that I probably honestly didn't even mean to save. But because Google Photos backs up everything, it just got lost there. Harold's private part is bigger than Johnny's. I don't care, though. And that's not just me saying that. I don't care. Johnny and I had a short conversation about the insecurity of his size. I confirmed that intimacy is amazing with him. I am always satisfied. I am happy. I do not think of Harold. I don't care about him. I am more than satisfied. One thing that I really, really liked about Johnny was that he never started an awkward, so my private part is small kind of conversation. He never mentioned it, just had intimacy, and did a phenomenal job. I never mentioned it either because it literally is not something I think about ever. He was always so confident in himself, willing to learn, humble, etc. Both in and out of the bedroom. Anyway, after our conversation, I really thought he was okay. But intimacy has been less frequent. He initiated less and he has started turning the lights off before taking his clothes off. I have tried being more enthusiastic and initiating more, but it hasn't really changed anything. He has always brought up problems when they arise. I have never really had to worry about if we're okay because we have always been proactive about communication. I think this is a bigger problem and he's too worried, embarrassed, scared to bring it up to me. I'm really heartbroken for him. I don't know how to have a conversation with him about this. I'm here looking for some pointers on how to start this conversation and make him feel better about our intimacy life or himself even. What would you say? Or what would you want to hear? I will have a conversation with him about this soon. I just want to start it the right way. Thanks in advance. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one. I've tried being more enthusiastic and initiating more. Please no. Imagine you were insecure about your cooking. Imagine your boyfriend found out you were insecure about your cooking. Imagine your boyfriend then made an exaggerated mmm after every meal. How would you feel about your cooking? Introducing dishonesty and hyperbole into the situation is going to undermine your confidence. Your options are do nothing and I mean nothing. Or you can try to have a conversation about what came up and just acknowledge that it was gross that you both had to see that, apologize for that, and check in with how he's feeling in a non-intrusive and non-leading way. Just don't make that latter option a big deal. Everything else is largely out of your control. Comment two. One thing the world needs to acknowledge by now is that even if weenie size doesn't matter to some women, it does to most men. It's presented as if it's about who they are with, but really it's also about how they measure up to each other and has nothing to do with who they are with. So you may truly not care, and he may even believe you, but his actions show he cares either way. This is said honestly though, I think this is something he will have to come to terms with by himself. 
Hopefully he will get to the point where he can say there is always a bigger fish, so to speak, and just be happy with himself. That is a rough one, though. Now, for the update, thanks for sticking around. So much has happened since I last posted, and I gotta tell you, it's been a rough few days. After that whole mess with the old photo of Harold, things just spiraled. I thought Johnny and I were on the mend, but boy, was I wrong. Out of nowhere, he started acting distant, and I mean more than just in the bedroom. He was barely talking to me, and when he did, it was like he was somewhere else. I tried to shake it off, thinking maybe work was stressing him out or something. Then two days ago, I got a call from a number I didn't recognize. I answered and it was Harold. My heart sank. He was furious, spitting words like venom. Turns out, he found out about the photo because someone had hacked my old email account and sent it to his current girlfriend. She dumped him on the spot. He blamed me, said I did it on purpose to get back at him for the past. I tried to explain, but he wouldn't listen. He threatened to sue me for defamation or something. I was shaking when I hung up. I didn't know what to do, so I went to Johnny for support. But when I told him, he just exploded. Accused me of still being hung up on Harold, of keeping the photo as a memento. No matter how much I tried to convince him it was an accident, he wouldn't have it. We had a huge fight and he stormed out. I felt like my world was crumbling. The next day, I was a mess at work. Couldn't focus. Kept replaying everything in my head. Then, in the middle of the day, I got an email from the hacker. They said they knew I was innocent and that they had proof Harold was the one who actually hacked my account and sent the photo to his girlfriend trying to frame me. They even had screenshots of Harold's computer with my account logged in. I couldn't believe it. Harold was trying to ruin my life out of spite. I went to the police with the evidence. They said they'd look into it, but I wasn't hopeful. I felt so alone. Johnny wasn't answering my calls, and I had this legal mess hanging over me. I was scared and angry, mostly at Harold, for being such a vindictive jerk. But then, yesterday, Johnny showed up at my door. He looked like he hadn't slept. He said he'd been doing some thinking and realized he'd overreacted. He apologized for not trusting me, for letting his insecurities get the best of him. We talked for hours, and it felt like we were finally getting back to a good place. And then, as if things couldn't get any crazier, the police called. They'd caught Harold trying to hack into another ex's account. With the evidence I provided and his history, they were able to charge him. Harold was finally facing the consequences of his actions. Johnny and I are taking things slow, trying to rebuild the trust that got shaken up. It's not going to be easy, but I'm hopeful. As for Harold, well, I guess he got what was coming to him. Thanks for reading. Am I the idiot for cutting off contact with two women after catching my husband too close with our neighbor? Hey everyone, I am currently 15 weeks along in my pregnancy. My husband and I have started discussing the appointments and schedules for the remainder of the year as our baby is due in November. Unfortunately, I recently found out that I will not receive paid maternity leave, but my husband will be eligible for up to four weeks of paid paternity leave. Since I work from home, I have already begun saving up for the three weeks that I will be out of work after the baby is born. I assume that my husband would be able to assist me during this time while I recover. And then I would have an additional week to readjust before returning to work. However, he responded by saying that he would be willing to take a week off, but not more than that. His reasoning is that taking two weeks off would result in a loss of $2,000, which he is uncomfortable with. Before I continue, I'd like to provide a few key details. My husband and I have been together for five years and just got married on May 4th. The pregnancy was not planned and we have had some previous issues. I have pre-existing health issues and have been diagnosed with hyperemesis gravidarum, which has led to four visits to the ER. My husband's job involves new construction plumbing, where he is paid per project. However, on rainy days or when inventory is low, he earns $1.15 per hour which he would still receive during his leave. We already have three large dogs and I handle the majority of their care, including vet visits and grooming. I believe these details are important in order for you to better understand my perspective. When my husband expressed that he would only be able to take a week off, it hit me hard and I couldn't help but cry. I realized that I would essentially be going through this alone 
I had already accepted that I wouldn't receive much help from him once he returned to work. Considering the physically demanding nature of his job and the exhaustion he already experiences, I told him that at this point, I would prefer him to just take the day off for the birth and I would handle everything else. I explained that a week of his assistance was barely anything. And if that was all I could expect, then I would rather not have any help at all. In fact, I've already started looking into finding someone on care.com or Rover who can assist with the baby and the dogs. We don't have any other family nearby and both of our parents work. Now I'm feeling guilty because my husband became upset by what I said and called himself a deadbeat before the baby has even arrived. I have been unable to find any information online regarding whether a week of assistance is sufficient or not, and I'm struggling to move past the emotional aspect of all this. I would appreciate some input or guidance because I'm feeling lost and unsure about what to think anymore. Edit since. Some of you seem to be quite cranky. I feel the need to clarify a few things. Yes, we did use protection, hence the surprise pregnancy. I live in FL, and maternity leave is not mandatory for employers. Although I could have utilized FMLA, it is not offered to me since I don't use my employer's insurance and haven't paid into it. The main reason for my post was to seek different viewpoints on this matter. This is our first child, and we had previously discussed having children later in life. This pregnancy was not planned. Rest assured, both the baby and I are under the care of my OB and cardiologist. Update, so. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, setting aside your husband, if you have congenital heart disease, you need to be talking to a cardiologist about the risks of pregnancy. You may end up needing way more than two weeks off before and after the birth. Unfortunately, those of us with lifelong health issues don't always have bodies that play ball with our financial necessities, such as permitted maternity and sick leave. So I think you need a safety net just in case, but your husband should be contributing to this fund too. Comment two. I know this is a very tough question, but is there any world in which you would consider not having this baby? Your health is at risk. Your relationship with this man doesn't seem the strongest. It seems like finances are a little tight. I know when push comes to shove, you'll get through it and this baby will be cared for and loved. But please know that you're allowed to prioritize yourself too. And if making a very tough decision is what's best for you, do it. Now for the update. Hey everyone, so things have gotten pretty wild since I last wrote. Remember how I said my husband would only take a week off? Well, turns out he's been hiding something big from me. He's been working on a side project for months, one that he believed would bring in enough money so he could take more time off when the baby arrives. But he didn't tell me because he wanted it to be a surprise. A good intention, sure, but keeping secrets in a marriage? Not the best idea. Anyway, he finally spilled the beans after seeing how stressed I was. He's been refurbishing old furniture and selling it online. He's actually pretty good at it and it's been bringing in some decent cash. But here's where it gets messy. He sold a piece to this lady and she's been messaging him nonstop. At first it was about the furniture, but then it got personal. I found the messages and confronted him. He swore it was nothing, that he was just being polite, but I felt a pang of jealousy. I mean, I'm here, pregnant and sick, and he's got some woman sending him smiley faces and winks. We fought and I told him to cut contact with her or I'd message her myself. He agreed, but I could tell he thought I was overreacting. I didn't care. I was hurt and felt betrayed. But I let it go because we had bigger things to worry about, like the baby. Then our neighbor, the one who's always been a bit too friendly with my husband, offered to help with the dogs when the baby comes. I didn't like it, but I needed the help, so I agreed. Big mistake. She started coming over more often, and I noticed things. Like how she'd find excuses to touch my husband's arm or laugh a little too loudly at his jokes. It made my blood boil. I should have seen it coming, but I was too wrapped up in my own problems. One day, I came home early from a doctor's appointment and found them a little too close for comfort in our living room. Nothing happened, but it was enough to make me see red. I kicked her out and told my husband that was it. No more neighbor, no more furniture lady, no more secrets. He apologized, said he didn't realize what was happening, that he was just trying to be nice. I wanted to believe him, but trust is like a mirror, you know? Once it's cracked, you always see the flaw. Now I'm sitting here, 
trying to figure out if I made the right call. I'm second-guessing myself, wondering if I'm just being hormonal and paranoid. But then I think about the baby, about how I need to protect our little family, and I feel like I did what I had to do. I've started to rely on a friend from work who's been a lifesaver. She's been helping me with appointments and even offered to stay with me for the first week after the baby is born. It's not ideal, but it's something. I'm just trying to keep it together for the baby's sake, so that's where I'm at. Trying to navigate this mess, hoping I haven't pushed my husband away for good, and praying that my friend's offer to help doesn't come with strings attached. I guess only time will tell. Thanks for reading. Am I the idiot for reading a book at dinner and getting disowned by my dad? Context. For the first 18 years of my life, I spent every weekend at my dad's house. We are complete opposites. I am anxious, reserved, and emotional, likely with undiagnosed autism. And he is outgoing and logical. We share zero interests in common, never really did activities together. And I got the feeling he didn't understand how I ticked, nor did he try to. Incident. Two years ago, I was in my third year of college and struggling majorly with social anxiety. To sum it up, I was in a rough place. We were having dinner together one weekend. I struggled to hold long conversations with him. I really just don't know what to talk about beyond how's life. So I was reading a book under the table while we ate, probably rude of me, but I would put it back down when we started a new conversation. He dropped me off home that day with a smile, chatting about what we'd eat next week. I didn't see him for a year after that, following months. Since it was such a shitty year for me, I never really noticed. Three weeks went by before I sent him a message asking how he was. He left it on red. Another month went by without him visiting, and I sent him another message asking how he was. He responded with a thumbs up emoji. I sent him a message asking if I had done something wrong, and he left me on red again. Christmas came, and with it, an opportunity. My mom had left her phone out, unlocked, and I checked her messages to my dad. I had no idea why he was effectively ignoring me and needed to investigate. Reading them was an unexpected blow. Over the course of the three months since that dinner, he calls me spoiled, a mute, rude, uncaring, that I never ask him how he is, that I hate him, just sit in silence like a statue, that he doesn't see the point in bothering to visit me or talk to me at all. He'd never expressed a sliver of these feelings to me before. He never really understood me or had a close relationship with me, but he had always been kind. That he could smile and laugh with me while feeling resentment deep down scares me. He messaged me out of the blue a year later, pretending like everything was normal and asked me to dinner. It was grim, to put it lightly. It felt like I was sitting opposite a stranger, and I was a nervous wreck the entire time, staring down at the table, distant and shaky. Neither of us mentioned what had happened. I left as soon as I could. He later messaged me saying that the meeting told him all he needed to know, that I would rather run off to my boyfriend than talk to him, and that my boyfriend could support me for the rest of my life because he was done with me. Extra context. I had gotten into a relationship around this time. Treating me like a little child that needs support from a man is insulting too. I've supported myself alone in all the ways that matter. I'm not really sure what to make of this situation almost two years later. He's right that I never really called him or messaged him regularly to ask how he was. I wish he would have told me his feelings rather than disappearing. Sometimes I think that this really is my fault and I'm just a terrible daughter. I've always struggled to open up to or talk to either of my parents. I want to mend bridges, but I'm not sure I can get past this rift. I just don't know where to go from here. When my grandma passes away, I know I'll need to see him again. Now for a few comments before the update, Comment one, at any point did you talk to your dad about your feelings about anything? If you can't verbalize them, then write them up and send them to him. I'm not excusing his actions though. As your parent, he should love you unconditionally, but you need to try as well. If you act like you hate him, then of course he's not gonna react well. Comment two, your dad doesn't understand you, but did you ever try to explain it? Reading a book at dinner is really rude. You need to deal with your social anxiety. It isn't just affecting your relationship with your dad, but also in other areas of your life. Start with finding a therapist. Now for the update. Thanks for sticking around. A lot has happened since I last wrote. So my grandma passed away last month. 
It was sudden and shook everyone up. I knew I'd have to see Dad at the funeral, and I was dreading it. But I didn't expect what happened next. The day before the funeral, I got a call from my aunt saying Dad had a heart attack. He was in the hospital, stable, but not great. My first thought was, I can't deal with this now. But then guilt crept in, and I went to see him. Walking into that hospital room was like stepping into another world. Dad looked so small in that bed, wires everywhere. He didn't say much, just looked at me with those eyes that seemed to say, I'm sorry, I didn't know what to do, so I just sat there. We didn't talk about the past. It felt like maybe this was a chance to start over. The funeral was the next day, and it was a mess. Emotions were high, and when it came time to read the will, things got worse. Grandma had left me her house, the one she'd lived in for over 50 years. Everyone was shocked, including me. Dad's sister, my Aunt Marie, was furious. She thought she deserved the house, and she didn't hide her anger. She accused me of manipulating Grandma, which is ridiculous. I barely even talked to Grandma the last few years because of my anxiety. After the funeral, I went back to the hospital to tell Dad about the will. He didn't react at first. Then he said it was good for me. But I could tell he was worried. He said he didn't want the house to come between us. I told him it wouldn't, that I'd handle it. I wanted to make him proud, to show him I could deal with this. That's when I made my big mistake. I decided to sell the house and split the money with Aunt Marie. I thought it would fix everything, keep the family together. But when I told her, she laughed in my face. She said she'd see me in court, that she deserved the whole house, not just half. I was stunned. I didn't see that coming. So now I'm caught up in a legal battle I never wanted. Dad's health is getting better, but he's stressed about the family fighting. He says he doesn't care about the money, but I can tell he's torn up about his sister turning on us. And I'm in the middle, trying to do the right thing, but feeling like I've just made everything worse. I've been talking to lawyers, trying to figure out what to do. It's all so overwhelming. I'm not cut out for this. I keep thinking maybe I should just give Aunt Marie the house and be done with it. But then I think about Grandma, and I feel like I'd be letting her down. In the midst of all this, my boyfriend has been my rock. He's been there for me, listening and trying to help. But Dad's words keep echoing in my head about how I'd run off to my boyfriend instead of dealing with my problems. It's like I'm proving him right, and I hate it. I'm trying to be strong to handle this mess I've created, but it's hard. I'm just so tired of all the fighting, the anger, and the resentment. I want to mend bridges with Dad, but it feels like every step I take just makes things worse. I'm not sure how this is going to end, but I'm trying to hold on to the hope that somehow things will work out. Thanks for reading. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.